guys, how's it going? Today we are putting together a succulent arrangement in this beautiful container right here. This feels like a blast from the past. I haven't set up to do a project like this in so long. Like, do I even remember how to work with succulents? How is this gonna look? I have no idea. Our neighbors are really enjoying the nice day outside. It's kind of happy noise. All the kids out playing in the street right now. I love it, it's beautiful out. So the reason I'm making this arrangement is it's a gift for my sister-in-law. So she's moving into a brand new home and she's really into house plants and succulents and everything like that. So I thought it would be fun just to put together a little welcome home gift for her. We're gonna sneak it into her house today. Uh, so anyway, I picked up this container recently. It's like this little wire basket with a metal container. So you can see it does not have a drainage hole. So we have to address that right away. Um, I think I can find a plastic saucer. There are some very thick kind of clear plastic saucers down at the garden center in square shape. I love that they have them in both squares and circles. So I don't think it'll be a problem to find a saucer to fit this properly, but to have the most success with succulents in particular, you do want to have a drainage hole. Now you can, you can get away with not putting a drainage hole in if you are, I think you need to be a little bit more experienced with the plants to begin with um, in order to be able to read your plants needs and know when you're giving them too much water or not enough and that kind of thing. Uh, but it's definitely a good idea. If you can put a drainage hole in, do that. So I've got a drill with a metal bit right here. So let's put, I'm just gonna put one hole in the bottom. That should be sufficient. All right, here we go. Ooh, please don't break. It's about ready to go through. It scares me every time because when it goes through, it just like, it does it so fast. Woo. Ha. Done. Okay. You set this to the side. So I think I'm gonna actually put this together while it's sitting in the wire basket because I wanna have some succulent spillage. I wanna have some succulents kind of like going over the edge. In fact, I picked up, I think this one's way too big, but I was, <laughs> I was initially thinking, oh, I could just tuck this one in on the edge. So anyway, that's kind of the look I want though. Like I want something to be tucked over. So maybe one of these right here, but let's talk soil first. I've got our cactus mix right here. This is what I've used for years and years and years. It works really well. Um, it doesn't hold on to too much moisture and none of these plants, as you know, they don't like a ton of moisture around their roots. The bags can be a little difficult to open though. God. <laughs> oh, perfect. So I'm gonna put a good amount in here. I brought out two bags just in case. We'll start with one bag. It does compress quite a lot, and I do remove quite a lot of the soil around the root balls of these plants as I'm working with them. So we'll just have to see what happens. Okay, so as I build this, you'll see that I put roots right up next to roots, plants right up next to plants. I really squish things in, and succulents can handle that. In fact, when you do that, it slows their growth rate down. And you can get away with a very packed full container. Like you see those mixed bowl arrangements of succulents. I'm sure you've seen those around where they just look like they have no breathing room, but they actually thrive and do really well in that sort of situation. Um, so that's kind of the look I'm gonna be going for here. So you can see I can tip the root ball a little bit. I don't think that's as much spillage as I want though. You know what, I'm gonna try this agave. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We can repot it. But if it does work, it will be like the most dramatic thing ever. So this isn't an agave. This is a mangave called barmy. So watch this. Oh, there's a pup. Look, how cute. We can remove so much of its root ball. There's another, another couple pups in here. So we can repot those or use them in this same arrangement. Oh, I didn't put my water right down there, did I? No. Good. Oh, that is just so gorgeous, isn't it? Okay, moment of truth. Let's see. Too much? Too much, Aaron? It's great. Does it? Maybe we'll build this a little bit bigger than I was thinking to accommodate the size of this glorious mangave here. So I'm just tucking in soil. I know it's a little bit hard to see. Maybe I'll twist it. I'm gonna pack in soil around the roots of this plant. 
and there will be in the end the soil will most likely mound up a little bit in this container to get the height that we want and that is totally fine to do it that way now you can use some of this soil that you've fluffed off the root ball in the arrangement if you want to uh, I typically like to put all fresh stuff in there because I don't know how long it's been potted in this and usually with stuff like this if there's no bugs in it that sort of thing we'll go spread it out in our garden bag number two need a little bit out of this one there we go now the roots are all covered okay that orange might look really pretty with the blue but I want to tuck this variegated string of pearls right in the front just to kind of like soften this little edge right here Ooh, soil just fell right off the bottom of that one. I'm just removing a little soil and kind of compressing the root ball just very lightly. We're gonna tuck right here. Gosh, that's a pretty plant, isn't it? The variegation is gorgeous. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is just start building kind of back from that. I'm gonna try to make sure it's pretty from all sides, but it definitely is gonna have a centerpiece side right here showing this big mangabe. This is a Crassula called Daydream. I like how it mirrors some of the variegation in the string of pearls. I'll probably add more of this one in here in a minute, but I kind of want to keep going here in this area. So I think this is a Graptocetum California Sunset. Boy, it's been a while. I used to know the names like real, <laughs> real easy. Is that the right way to say it? I used to know them real well. Real well. <laughs> And then we've got a glorious looking Echeveria here. Variety unknown. You guys might know. Okay, now it's time for some more of this Crassula. Tucks right in there, it's beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna go in with another string of pearls. I want something to drape on that side. Okay, so now I think I'm gonna go with some of this Portulacaria variegata right here. I like this because the branches kind of have this almost draping. You can, uh, you can plant them to where they look like they're kind of draping or coming out the sides to bring a little bit more width to this arrangement. See that right there? So if you put something like this in over here, then you get that kind of movement on this side of the arrangement. I'm going to add one more on this side real quick. I am going to attempt tucking this graptocetum in underneath this mangave so we get a little bit of color down there. Give me another one. Okay, so I've got this really cool plant that I don't know the name of, but it mirrors that purple and the pink that's in this Echeveria down here. Um, these have quite long stems, so this will be a really beautiful one to add as kind of a tall element back here. You know, because there's so many roots already in this container, I would turn the container around so you could see exactly what I was doing, but I really need to pay attention so I don't lose any of these out the side. So maybe, Erin, do you want to come back here quick and see if you can show everybody what, <laughs> what I'm doing from a different angle? So see how I've got like this ring of plants? A lot of their roots are kind of coming toward the middle. So I'm just gently taking my fingers and creating another hole for this new plant while kind of holding on to all the plants at the same time, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. See that? See, I'm kind of like spreading these roots. And this one is going to have to be quite deep because I, you know, I want these to be up above, but not too far up above. That might work. Look at that. Yeah, let's try that out. That's pretty. You know, another thing that you can do, I was going to try to avoid it with this arrangement, but when things start getting really packed in there, it gets harder and harder to fit larger root balls or longer stems. You can make fresh cuttings and just put them right down in the soil. Uh, usually when you make a fresh cutting on a succulent, something like this, right there, you want to let that cut and heal. So you can let that either happen outside of the arrangement, uh, you know, a couple of days in a bright indirect light in a warm spot, that little cut end will heal over, thus not allowing a lot of water into the plant because the cuttings can rot really quickly that way. If you want to use them straight in the soil, like I can do this right here today, put it straight down in there. The only thing you need to watch out for is to 
not water your arrangement for about a week. It will still dry, the cut end will dry because there's still oxygen exchange happening in the soil. It won't do that, of course, if you introduce water, uh, but just let it set for five, seven days or so, and then you can start watering and those cuttings will start making new roots. In fact, if you do a whole rooted arrangement or a whole cuttings arrangement like this, uh, you'll actually get a longer amount of time out of it because those cuttings will sit there for so long trying to you know, create new roots that they won't be even thinking about putting on any sort of growth at all. So you probably buy yourself a few months if you do it that way. So all that said, I'm running out of room, so I'm gonna have to do some, <laughs> some cuttings in here. Kinda wanted to pop this one in the side, see how it's gonna look. All right, guys, I'm gonna spend just a few minutes kinda cleaning up this area because we did go and grab a Lazy Susan so I could spin this arrangement around. I don't know why I don't think to do that in the beginning. <laughs> One of you guys actually sent this out to us, which is really nice. What? Look at how nice that is. Right in this area, I wanna add some more bulk in this same kind of blue color. So I'm going to take out this big one right in the center. I love succulents. You can just manhandle them and they don't even care. Okay, so you can see right here, I hope, you can see the stem and where the roots are, and I've packed soil around all the roots that were present. Now that is um, kind of, it's not super sturdy there. It will be once I get more things packed in around it, but for the time being, I'm gonna help it out a little bit. I'll help myself out, I guess, and tack it down with a landscape staple just so that we don't lose its position. There we go. Okay, now I need something green. Back in the day when I used to do these all the time, it was such a streamlined process and I, I kind of like knew the next move I was going to make because I was doing them so often and now I'm like, <laughs> you should see the space around me. It's a total mess. Oh yeah, look at this. Look at how pretty that is. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it. All right, I think I'm going to tuck a couple more of these these Echeverias, which was there a name here? Echeveria Blue Sky. So this is the same one, just smaller version of that one right there. These have nice long stems, so I might be able to nest them right above this plant here. It's not going anywhere. Boy, some of these succulents, when you get them, they've been just so well watered, <laughs> like a little too well watered. Another thing about these, you guys, these were uh, succulents at Home Depot. Actually, this morning, Erin and I went over there to look for something completely different, but they had this huge table of outdoor succulents for 50% off. So it kind of worked out perfectly. So we're tucking in another one of these right here. Always groom off anything that needs it usually a few little dry leaves around the base. I just have a small corner left. I'm just gonna continue tucking in plants the same way until it's completely done. love how this turned out. It was really fun doing something like this again. I kind of forget about how much I used to enjoy just kind of like standing in one spot. I'm so used to just going out and planting and using the great big auger. It really is a joy just to stand here in the shade and put together something fun with some really beautiful plants. So this is crammed full of of plants and I did mention earlier uh, they can survive like this for usually I have been able to get a little over a year out of a, an arrangement that looks like this uh, before I have to dismantle it sometimes I'll dismantle it all together and create something new which after a year it's kind of fun to do that anyway sometimes I just remove individual succ succulents so that it gives the others room to grow you know along the way you'll probably have to do a little grooming you know come along and pop off any dried up leaves things like that I did use two cuttings in this arrangement so these two right here 
are the only two cuttings. So I will let my sister-in-law know that those are cuttings and not to water it for the next week or so. And I think this is gonna be really fun because not only will this last, I kind of thought about doing a cut flower arrangement for her, but I think she's gonna be so busy and in and out um, that it would be, this is gonna be less work and it will last a lot longer. I am going to include, so this is my plan. I've got this little slate right here. This is kind of neat. Hang on, let me just scoot this over. So I think I'm gonna put this on her island, the slate like that. This kind of like so. I'm gonna include a little cactus fertilizer in with it so she's got everything she needs to keep it nice. And then I've got some chalk and I'm just gonna write welcome home on it right there. I think that'll be really fun. So that's what we're gonna do now. We're gonna take it over there and get it all set up. We are here. I already set the slate inside and the kids are already inside playing. There's something about an empty house that's so fun to kids. I think it's gonna be really pretty in here though. Oh, isn't that fun? Okay. And that's it you guys, what a fun project today. I'm so excited to see what she does with this place and we may be able to get involved outside a little bit too maybe along the way. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.